Okay, this is going to be Alfred Iverson's Brigade at Gettysburg, part one here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And today we're going to talk about Brigadier General Alfred Iverson and his brigade, and a little bit about the area that we're standing on, which is Oak Ridge. Today, if you come to this area, uh, this road here is the Mummersburg Road. And then the Eternal Light Peace Memorial is just across the street. And we're going to start right here in front of the monument to the 17th Pennsylvania Cavalry. Um, because this is the site that Brigadier General Alfred Iverson's brigade, on the early morning of July 1st, 1863, came into action. They were a part of Major General Robert E. Rhodes' division that were advancing from the north into this direction. And Brigadier General Alfred Iverson's brigade formed up at the John Forney Farm. Now one thing that visitors of the Gettysburg Battlefield don't realize today is at one time, right about where the tree stood over here, there was a farmhouse owned by a man named John Forney. And just on the other side of the monument in this area was his barn. And this was the site of the forming up of Brigadier General Alfred, Alfred Iverson's brigade on the morning of July 1st, 1863. And it is where they would begin their ill-fated attack across this very field that we now stand in. And we'll, we'll talk about that ill-fated attack on part two in our next video. Uh, the John Forney Farm sat here on the Mummersburg Road. Um, it was also used just after the action um, as a field hospital, and it was also the retreating uh, of the Alver Alfred Iverson's brigade, and it's actually a spot where some of the soldiers shielded themselves from artillery fire coming off uh, the Union troops behind the stone wall in the distance. And again, we'll go over that in our next video. But again, this has been Alfred Iverson's Brigade Part 1 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Iverson's Brigade at Gettysburg Part 2 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And just in the center of our screen, the tree that you see is where we shot our first video. And this is where Brigadier General Alfred Iverson began to march toward our camera with his brigade of North Carolina troops past the John Forney farm, which is marked by the tree there in the distance. And he marched them in this direction uh, because he believed that Union soldiers um, from Henry Baxter, Brigadier General Henry Baxter, uh, were in this direction here by a stone wall and defending a stone wall. Though they couldn't have been seen at the time, he believed that Union soldiers were in this area and he began marching. His plan was to hit this area and hit the flank of these federal soldiers. Now it was in this area that both the 11th and the 1st Corps uh, came together and merged and he, his job was to hit their flank uh, but he was not aware that a brigade of soldiers, and those soldiers would be under Brigadier General Henry Baxter, were hiding behind a stone wall. Now, just as we walked back in this direction, you can see the stone wall starts to disappear. So, he did not realize that they were hiding behind that stone wall. As the troops passed the John Forney farm in perfect battle line formation, um, they began marching in this direction, and when they got to this point right up here where you see this little monument, those troops from Henry Baxter's brigade opened fire and on the very first volley shot down over 500 of them instantly, killing them. They died in perfect battle formation. Uh, and today, when you come here, you can see this little dip in the ground here uh, behind this monument. You can really see it good before the grass grow, uh, grows up. But this dip is where those uh, men died uh, in battle formation and they were buried here on the field, right where they fell. 
Over the next few years, families from the South had their dead uh, disinterred and taken south. However, uh, just a few years after the Battle of Gettysburg, a lot of the burial spots of these dead uh, became unknown, and many of them still are buried here today on this spot on the first day's battlefield here at Gettysburg. Now again, um, marching from the John Forney farm on the early morn morning, of July 1st, 1863, Brigadier General Alfred Iverson and his North Carolina troops began marching this direction toward the Union flank, believing that there were soldiers in this area, but not realizing that they were hiding behind a stone wall. And as we're walking here, uh, you cannot see the stone wall in the distance. And as we begin to uh, move up this hill, I want you to watch the camera and you'll see the stone wall appear. Now we're further than Iverson's troops ever got, so he never realized that they could not be seen. However, uh, they never made it that far. These Union troops under Henry Baxter, Brigadier General Henry Baxter, and now you can see the stone wall starting to form, rose up from the stone wall, fired a volley into them, and instantly killed over 500. Within a few minutes after that, Brigadier General Alfred Iverson had lost over half of his brigade and they were forced to retreat back toward the Forney Farm, making this one of the biggest failures of troop command here at Gettysburg and also one of the saddest spots uh, of the burial trench that we know today as Iverson's Pits. This has been Alfred Iverson's Brigade at Gettysburg, Iverson's Pits, part three, or part two, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Brigade at Gettysburg, part three, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're standing here today in front of the monument to the 88th Pennsylvania Volunteers, members of Brigadier General Henry Baxter's Brigade on the morning of July 1st, 1863. It was mainly a force of this, this regiment behind this stone wall here that rose up and fired the volley at Brigadier General Alfred Iverson's North Carolina Brigade in which ki killed over 500 of them instantly. Now the 88th Pennsylvania was comprised of Pennsylvania Dutch recruits um, and during this action they actually captured two battle flags. Uh, one battle flag was captured by Sergeant Edward Gilligan. Uh, he captured the flag of the 23rd North Carolina. Also in this engagement, the capture of the 26th Alabama's flag happened also in the Forney Farm. Um, the monument is one of the more interested one because it contains uh, a stack of soldiers' items that have been discarded after a battle. It's a stack of uh, items such as a cap box and a cartridge box and a trumpet and cannon barrels and a drum and a backpack with a blanket roll. Um, it's, it's topped by uh, the eagle and it also has a laurel wreath near the top. Uh, it's one of the more interesting monuments here, I'm actually one of the more beautiful ones here on the Gettysburg National Military Park. Um, it has the, the items uh, or the accoutrements of a soldier, but instead of wearing them, they're all stacked in a pile as if they had been thrown aside uh, after a particular battle. Uh, one of the more uh, neat things about this monument, uh, or challenge you might say, is for someone to come out here and try to find and name all the items on the pile on the top of this monument. Um, and again, they were members of Brigadier General uh, Henry Baxter's brigade. They were behind this stone wall right here, um, hiding as uh, Brigadier General Alfred Iverson's brigade started at the Forney Farm there in the distance where you see the tree, and they marched across this field here in perfect formation where they were slaughtered uh, basically on the first volley uh, here on the Forney Farm at Gettysburg. This has been Alfred Iverson's Brigade, Part 3, a look at the 88th Pennsylvania on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Iverson's Brigade.
Brigade Part 4 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook, our final part. And as a special bonus, uh, we're going to add this secret to the battlefield. Now today in the distance you can see the Edward McPherson farm, Reynolds Woods, and you can also see the railroad cut bridge. And if you drive on the auto tour to this area here where Wadsworth Avenue meets Buford Avenue and connects here with Reynolds Avenue, uh, and you make a left at this road like you're going out toward the Eternal Light Peace Memorial, which you can see there in the distance. And also that was the site of the John Forney Farm that we shot video one, two, and three on, all out in this field. This was the charge of Alfred Iverson's brigade from the Forney Farmhouse across his farm over to Oak Ridge. But when you turn here, people always see this strange looking concrete object here on the side of the road and don't really understand what it is. If it's some kind of a base or a well or whatnot. What this item actually is, it is the former uh, ticket office for an airport. And we're going to call this Iverson's Airport since it sits out here in the field where Iverson's Brigade charged across. It was actually owned by a company called the Gettysburg Flying Service. Um, and in October of 1929, there was an, actually an air show that was held in this field, which was attended by over 20,000 people. Uh, two of the pilots that were here that day, uh, Ira Eaker and Pete Quassad, actually would go on later on in, in World War II to become famous fighter pilots. Um, this was also the site where you could take off in an airplane, as you see the airplane flying above today, from the Gettysburg Airport, which was built later on Route 30. You could fly f from an airplane here and take air tours of the Gettysburg National Military Park. President Eisenhower used this airport to fly between his farm here in Gettysburg as well as the White House. Um, and of course, <clears throat> In the 70s, the airport uh, fell into a state of disrepair, and by 1981, uh, it had just become a turf farm. But this strange object here is the old foundation for a little ticket building that once stood here on the site. And I'm actually going to post a photograph uh, of the Gettysburg Airport, known as the Gettysburg Flying Service, that was taken just beyond this fence in the field, looking straight toward the Eternal Light Peace Memorial, and you're going to see see if you zoom in the building that was here and then just over here where the Buford Avenue sign is there was a stone wall that said Gettysburg Airport on it um, again as a special added bonus in our secrets of the battlefield uh, I'm adding this into the Alfred Iverson Brigade at Gettysburg video series this has been Alfred Iverson's Brigade at Gettysburg the site of Al Alfred Iverson's Airport, Part 4 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.